we are on to our final team out of the Big Ten Conference, and it takes us to West Lafayette, Indiana, where we get to talk about the Purdue Boilermakers. And Ryan Walters, well, coming over from Illinois, definitely knew he had a project on his hands. Fairly solid start last year. You saw a lot of good things, and now 2024 is all about taking steps in the right direction. Will that happen for the Purdue Boilermakers, and can Ryan Walters take this team to a postseason berth? You're about to find out what I think here in this video. What's up, Tailgaters? You're in the booth with Tailgate Nate today. Welcome to my channel, and welcome to Prediction Season. It's where I predict all 134 FBS-level college football teams. That's what I'm doing this summer, and if you're as big of a college football nerd as I am, you got to subscribe to hear my thoughts during the season as well. Uh, hey, we're almost done with Power 4 predictions. We got four teams left, one in each conference. Conference. We're wrapping up with the Big Ten today. Guys, I'm doing your favorite team. You got to subscribe. But I just want to thank you so much for watching this video and all of my other videos this prediction season. If this is the first video of mine you're watching, I highly suggest you go watch some more. But hey, interacting with the channel in any way, shape, or form helps to support it, whether that's watching the videos or subscribing, which are the two biggest ways of doing that. You can also like, you can comment, you can share. Really, anything you do to help support the channel means a lot to me. And, uh, well, I'd be greatly appreciative of whatever you guys are willing and able to do for my channel. After a quick water break, yeah, we got a new cup this time. Stay hydrated out there. Make sure you get plenty of water. Let's dive on into talking about the final team out of the Big Ten again. It's the Purdue Boilermakers. How do we do predictions on my channel? Where well, I'm glad you asked. We're going to take a deep dive into the team's offense, into the defense, and at the end of the day, we will go through the team's schedule and give it a game-by-game -game preview and prediction. Sorry if I sounded a little congested and stuffy. I've been dealing with the throat thing. But nonetheless, we're going to talk about Purdue after a couple more footnotes because right over here are going to be the stats the team put up either offensively or defensively last season. And, of course, for your viewing pleasure, right below the team's logo, I have put the team's coaching staff. No more time wasted. Let's dive on into talking about the Purdue offense where we start with with the quarterback position. The former Texas Longhorn Hudson Card is going to be coming back another season uh, for, for him and West Lafayette. And overall, well, last season definitely wasn't terrible. You saw a lot of really good things, but you are definitely going to be expecting bigger things out of Hudson Card here in 2024. Last season had 2,387 yards through for 15 touchdowns, eight interceptions on around 58.9% complete percentage. I think Hudson Card is capable of doing a lot more than that. I think he's capable of 2,500 yards easily. I think he's capable of 20 touchdowns. That interception number hanging right around eight, I don't necessarily mind. I know he's also capable of getting that completion percentage up. Hudson Card, I think it's just got to show some improvement for Purdue this season in order for this offense to start taking steps in the right direction. Overall, it was an offense that saw some really good things last season. Saw some good things throwing the football. Definitely saw some good things rushing the football. They rushed for almost 170 yards per game last season. Granted, they also did uh, run 462 run plays last year compared to only 392 passes. So that tells you they run more run plays than pass plays. Obviously going to be a run first team. But Hudson Card, I think is you I think I think as long as he shows some improvement here in 2024, the offense is going to take a step in the right direction. How big of an improvement does he make? Well, I'm very curious to see. Ryan Brown does come back to be his backup. While well, you get a freshman in Marcos Davila that who knows, maybe could see some playing time here in 2024. Running back room, you do lose a name to the NFL. Tyrone Tracy, a converted wide receiver coming over from Iowa, was really a running back for this team last season and was the team's second leading rusher and led the team in a lot of categories. Only 113 carries, but had 716 yards, led the team in rushing touchdowns with eight, and led the team in yards per carry with 6.3. Really dynamic weapon, obviously for good reason. He'll now be playing on Sundays and Dylan Downing, the team's third leading rusher, is going to be gone as well. 211 yards and one touchdown for him last season. You go back to Hudson Card. He was the team's fourth leading rusher last year. So you lose your second and third leading rushers, but your leading rusher among running backs is back this season. Devin Mockaby will be returning to the running back room. 807 yards, six touchdowns on 172 on 172 carries last season. Devin Mockaby will be another solid piece of this offense here in 2024. He'll get his fair share of carries, and who knows, maybe if things go well enough for him this year, could be a candidate to break 1,000 yards. 
However, yes, you are losing Tracy and Downing, but you're getting some pieces in to kind of fill that void, right? Reggie Love is an Illinois transfer who we've seen have some pretty good minutes over in Champaign. He's going to take his talent over here to West Lafayette. And Jaheim Merriweather, another freshman coming in that could end up playing some pretty big minutes for the Boilermakers in 2024. Wide receiver room, let's talk about it. I definitely think the wide receiver room takes a pretty big step back this season, considering the talent that you do lose. Uh, you, you lose Dion Burks, who, it, it, look, only had 629 yards, seven touchdowns on 47 catches last season. That doesn't seem like that impressive of a stat line, but when you watch him play, he is such a difference maker, and Purdue is losing a truly special player at the wide receiver position. He is transferring out to go play for the Oklahoma Sooners. You are also losing the team's second leading receiver in TJ Sheffield, 381 yards and two touchdowns for him on 32 catches last season. Uh, again, enter the portal as well. He's going to go over uh, and play for the UConn Huskies. You're also losing your third leading receiver from the team last year. Abdur Rahman Yassin has transferred over to South Florida to go partake in the Bulls and who knows could be a sleeper team in the AAC they're supposed to be really really good this year you seen last year 329 yards sadly no touchdowns for him but still was a viable option in this wide receiver room so right there numbers one two and three in terms of receiving yards out of this room are gone they are they will be playing for other programs in 2024 so what do you have coming back well, Jaden Dixon Veal is coming back. Jamal Endrin and Andrew Sawinski are all back. Not pieces that well played a whole lot last year. Yes, Dixon Veal did get some time, had 142 yards receiving last season. Devin Mockaby is a fairly solid player coming uh, out of the backfield to be able to catch the ball. Uh, had 180 uh, yards last year on 19 catches, did have one touchdown, but is used primarily as a runner. So what do you do? You dive into the transfer portal, you get some pieces. A couple pieces are coming over from Georgia. A couple three-star rated transfers in CJ Smith and Denylon Morissette. Uh, and you also do get Cam Brown coming in through the portal as well. He's coming over from a program that's joining the Big Ten this year, and UCLA should play some big minutes for the Boilermakers in 2024. Garrett Miller leaves through the portal, so hey, well, why not? Just tack on your fourth leading receiver from last year, gone as well. So Garrett Miller will be playing for a new program in 2024, which leaves Max Clare at the tight end position to be that leading receiver returning to this team. Had 196 yards last season. He's the leading receiver returning to this team at least. Uh, George Beren, Andrew Biber will be some backup tight ends behind Claire here in 2024. And on the offensive line, you lose Daniel Johnson due to graduation slash the CFL. He was selected to the Canadian Football League. And Josh Kautzenberger uh, does leave through the transfer portal. I believe he is off to Maryland. So who comes back on the offensive line? Gus Hartwig, uh, Maha Mane Musa, Marcus Embo, uh, Jalen Grant, and Luke Griffin all come back while you get a lot of pieces coming in from the portal. Two most notable to me, Corey Stewart and DJ Win Winfield, Wingfield. My apologies. Both those guys can push for starting minutes there. Again, this offense is all about Hudson Card improving, in my opinion. If he can show minimal improvement, and look, maybe Burke, Sheffield, and Yassin aren't going to be as big of losses as I'm making them out to be. I think those are substantial losses, and I think the wide receiver room takes a step back. But as long as Hudson Card card can improve i think this run game is going to be solid and we'll see what the overall this purdue offense is made of here in 2024 but when you talk about the defensive side of the ball hey saw a lot of really good things last year the rush defense was pretty solid pass defense definitely needs some work and the team allowed way too many points uh, uh, last season you are going to be looking to improve a lot of things on the defensive side of the ball. And Ryan Walters, of course, was a former defensive coordinator. So this is the side of the ball that I think is going to get the most focus here uh, when you're trying to watch Purdue here in 2024. How much does the defense improve? I think that's really going to tell the story along with Hudson Card. How does he play? But you do lose a lot of talent off the defense from last season. Malik Langham is gone to the NFL. That's a loss off the, the defensive line. Purdue's cranked out some really good defensive linemen in the past. Langham is one of them. Uh, 20 tackles in a sack for him last season and then a ton of pieces are going to be gone through the transfer portal and one due to graduation nick scourton is a four-star rated transfer according to 24 7 sports he will be going over to play for the texas a and m aggies really really talented player i'll find a stat line here for you 50 tackles led the team with 10 sacks a season ago had three pass defended as well supremely talented player that will now be playing in the sec you also do lose Suleiman kapka uh, as well as corday sindor those are some other losses there on the defensive line and isaiah nichols 
last season had 20 tackles and a sack, duplicating the stat line that of Malik Langham uh, has run out of eligibility. He has since graduated. So what does your defensive line look like in 2024? Well, Jeffrey Embaugh does come back, should get some solid playing time this year. Joe Anderson is back, Cole Brevard, Will Hell, and Mo. Amanode uh, are all going to be coming back here. Apologies for any mispronunciation. I probably butchered that last name, but you get a lot of guys coming in through the portal. Uh, the portal. My apologies. Shedasilla is coming over from Boston College. You have CJ Madden and Jare Ojada coming into the program as well. Uh, Ojada coming over, I believe, from an FCS community college, uh, the Juco school. Uh, while you are getting CJ Madden, while the Georgia transfers continue, you're getting him over from Georgia. We know how they roll when recruiting defensive players. They only recruit the best of the best. CJ Madden could have a bright future, has a pretty good defensive end, likely where they will play play him here for the Purdue Boilermakers. In the linebacker room, OC Brothers, uh, Ock Brothers, Octavius Brothers, however you refer to him, he is deciding to go play his football elsewhere in 2024. Brothers last season, uh, well, had himself a pretty solid year. 19 tackles, two sacks, three passes defended. Nothing to really get your eyes wide about, but nothing to sneeze at nonetheless. Clyde Washington, another loss out of this linebacker room. He will be leaving through the portal. 21 tackles for him last season. So the linebacker room this year, lots of returners. Kydrin Jenkins, Yanni Karloftis, and... Hudson Miller are all going to be coming back. I'll fix the f sort of formatting and spelling here one second. Apologies for that. Again, sometimes my graphics go all weird. Anyway, to recap the linebacker room, Kydron Jenkins, Yanni Karloftis, and Hudson Miller all going to be coming, coming back. Jenkins and Karloftis were two of the top five tacklers on the team last season. Jenkins with 56, Karloftis with 55. Jenkins second on the team with seven and a half sacks, and you have two and a half sacks coming back with Yanni Karloftis as well. Got some really good pass rushers in this linebacker room. It will be none different here in 2024. Defensive back room, let's talk about it real quickly. Cam Allen's a really good corner that leaves this team. 30 tackles, six passes defended, which was second on the team, and had three interceptions, which was also second on the team, because we'll talk about a really impressive player in a minute, but rightfully so. He'll be playing on Sundays along with his teammate in the safety position, Sanusi Kane. Uh, he had himself a pretty good year last year, 79 tackles, which was second on the team, and seven passes defended, which did lead the Purdue Boilermakers last season, so you lose him. Marquise Wilson is six passes defended out of the cornerback position. You'll leave him, do, or you'll lose him due to graduation, and Zion Steptoe is gone through the transfer portal, a loss in the safety room, even though he only had 11 tackles last season. You take a look at what comes back in this defensive back room, well, you are getting Mar Markevious Brown, uh, Batros, Alessandro, and Derek Rogers back in the cornerback room, while Nyland Green is a transfer here that is going to be entering this program. Nyland Green is going to be coming over again from Georgia. Really good defensive players over there. He could play big minutes in the cornerback room. Dylan Thineman is coming back, though, and that is your key player in the secondary. 106 tackles, two pass defended, and get this, six interceptions for him last season. He's coming back. That's a high-impact player, as well as Antonio Stevens, Joseph Jefferson. They return as well, while Kendrick Breedlove and Sterling Smith enter through the transfer portal. Special teams players, kickers are people too. We show them some love around here. So Jack Ansel, uh, the primary punter from last year, has gone through the portal. So your really only primary returner is Ben Freehill. But hold on a minute. The kicking battle gets interesting because RJ Lopez enters through the portal. And according to rlads.com right now, it is freshman Spencer Porath that's supposed to take over the kicking duties. However, I could see any three of them kicking for Purdue in 2024, while Keelan Crimmins is a guy coming over through the portal that's expected to do the punting for Purdue this upcoming season. I've rambled on here a lot uh, about this defense, but uh, you're going to need a lot of the transfers to fit in on the, the defensive line. And overall, you just want to see improvement to this Purdue defense here in 2024. Again, there are a couple positions. The defensive line, you could argue, is one of them to where they lose a, a lot of talent, and it's going to be pretty difficult to replace that p position. You lose a pretty high-impact player pretty much everywhere on the defensive side of the ball. But overall for Purdue, I think they did a pretty solid job getting players over from, from the transfer portal. The linebacker room, I think, will be the strength of this defense, and it's all about how things gel for Purdue and how they improve under Ryan Walters in 2024, which leads me to the Purdue for football schedule for this upcoming season. Hey, any game at home is going to be underlined. Well, any game on the road will be in italics. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it is that slanted text. Any game in green will be under – or any game in green – 
will be highlighted. The date will be, and it means that Purdue's going to be walking away with a pretty easy win in 2024. Any game in yellow will be a close competitive game, but one that I still see Purdue being able to win. Well, any game in red is a loss. On paper, this is the Purdue team that I think takes a couple step backs in a couple positions, but overall I think sees improvement in 2024. Does that reflect in their record? Well, you're about to find out their non-conference play, really, really challenging. No, the Indiana State game is not challenging, even though fairly solid team out of the FCS ranks could give Purdue some troubles. But I still think the Boilermakers are going to be able to win that game. And then you get your first bye week of the season. Really, really early place for a bye week, but it's probably going to be needed before you have to play the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Look, Purdue's got a lot of nice talent on it, but I like Marcus Freeman's squad way too much, and I think Notre Dame shouldn't really have a whole lot of trouble with the Purdue Boilermakers, especially knowing how good that Notre Dame defense Probably is going to end up being here in 2024. Benjamin Morrison comes back. There's a ton of talent on the defensive line and the linebacker position and on the offensive end. Well, yes, you're losing a lot through the portal, but you are getting Riley Leonard in at quarterback and an offense I still think is going to be fairly solid. That's a team that I think Purdue is going to lose to uh, as Notre Dame picks up the win against Purdue. So Purdue drops back down to 500. And I think Purdue loses on the road to the Oregon State Beavers here as well. Look, Oregon State is a team this season that loses everybody. Damian Martinez, the stellar running back, gone. Silas Bolden, the leading receiver, gone. Most importantly, DJ Uyunglele at the quarterback position, gone. All those guys are finding new homes through the transfer portal. Mascarenas Arnold at the linebacker position, and many other defensive players are gone with this team as well. But Ben Goldbranson is back. They got some pretty nice pieces coming in through the portal from some pretty major programs. And overall, I still think Oregon State's going to be a solid football team this year, especially with the this one being playing in Corvallis, I think Purdue is going to see their struggles. They go on the road and they lose to Oregon State. So yeah, while you win a non-conference game, you lose two out of your three. And then you have to enter Big Ten play against some teams that I think are going to end up being pretty good this year. One of them is the Nebraska Cornhuskers, and I do think you'll lose that game. Dylan Royola is in, and watch out for him. I think he's going to be an absolute stud. Nebraska's got a really, really good defensive roster, along with one of the best defensive staffs in the entire country. And the Cornhuskers are just going to be a pretty darn good football team team this year much better than they have been in seasons prior they at least will go bowling this year that is the expectation around Lincoln Nebraska will win the game against Purdue I even think Wisconsin will win the game against Purdue I don't think now Wisconsin got a lot of hype last season yes Luke Fickle was coming in one of the hottest if not the hottest head coach in the country at the time of taking that job he brought in some really really nice pieces and just things didn't seem to fit together that well for him in year one in Madison Year two, I think that's going to change. Tyler Van Dyke is not, not being talked about enough, in my opinion. I think he's going to have a stellar season in Madison. I think he's in the right system. And overall, Wisconsin is just a team that I really like to exceed expectations this upcoming season, and that includes a win against the Purdue Boilermakers. Illinois, you got to go on the road. Reggie Love is going to be playing his former team, and I think he'll suffer a loss to the Illinois Fighting Illini. Illinois is a team that's got to see their improvements in 2024 as well. But... I do still like this Illinois team defensively. I think Brett Bielema is going to get the squad playing really well, even though they lose some pretty good defensive pieces. Luke Altmaier has to take a step forward in the right direction at the quarterback position. If they don't, or I should say if he doesn't, well, Illinois could see uh, some pretty disappointing results this season. But overall, I like the Illinois fighting line. I think they got a good matchup here against the Purdue Boilermakers. Plus, it's a road game in, in Champaign. I think Purdue drops that one to the fighting Illini. And quite simply, Oregon's going to be one of the best teams in the country this year. This is going to be a Friday night game in Autzen Stadium. That place is going to be loud. You have to go up against Dylan Gabriel, uh, an amazing group of wide receivers, a phenomenal defensive line. I don't know what else you want me to say. I don't see a way that Purdue beats Oregon this year in 2024. But you've lost six in a row now you have to win out to make it to a bowl game and while i don't think that happens i do think you get a couple wins in big 10 play this year northwestern is one of them all credit to what ryan braun did with that northwestern team last season and he very well could do so again in 2024 am i counting on it no northwestern especially when you compare their talent to pretty much any other roster in the big 10 conference you could argue that purdue Indiana, UCLA, some of the teams that are projected to sit towards the uh, lower rankings of the Big Ten standings have more talent than Northwestern. Now, Ryan Brown has proven himself to be a pretty good head coach, but I think Purdue going to get that win at home. They get the extra week of preparation after their second bye week. 
and Purdue beats Northwestern at home. You're not going to be beating Ohio State, especially since that game is in Columbus in the shoe. No way you're going on the road. Again, much like the game with Oregon. There are, or no, my apologies. That game not in uh, 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 Autzen Stadium. That game going to be in Ross Ad Stadium. So I'll go back and fix an er, earlier correction there. I saw the home underlined and just thought Oregon. So uh, my apologies for that. I'll go back and fix that, even though Purdue's at home. Oregon's still one of the most talented teams in the country, much like Ohio State, and you have to go on the road to play that one. Don't think you win there. Don't think you win against Penn State, even though, again, that one is at, at home. Penn State's got Drew Aller back, one of the best running back duos in the country. Abdul Carter, one of the best defensive players in the country, is back. I don't think you beat the Penn State Nittany Lions. I don't think you're beating the Michigan State Spartans in week 13. Jonathan Smith is that head coach. There's still some really good defensive pieces, especially with Ian Childs is the quarterback he's supposed to be. Well, Michigan State's going to fare off to be a pretty solid team this upcoming season. Uh, but I do think you pick up that final win against the Indiana Hoosiers on the road in week 14. It's a rivalry game, and I think Purdue will be itching to at least get a third win th this season. Indiana's got a lot of talented transfers coming in, but Kurt Signetti's system needs time to set in. So overall, technically a step back for Purdue. Again, I think there are some uh, uh, pieces on this roster, or I should say some position groupings that are a downgrade. But overall, still like Purdue this year to make some improvements, and Ryan Walters can really build in year three. They got a tough schedule ahead of them. Let me know what you think about the Boilermakers in the comment section below. Remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. We'll move on to the UTSA Roadrunners coming up next. Goodbye.